Hello guys, it's me Lunar, welcome back to another PUBG Xbox One video. Today there is an update to the game, all the stuff on the PTS has finally come to the live servers. I'm going over all of the changes, which will add the training mode, two new weapons, two new vehicles to PUBG, along with several quality of life and bug fixes. If the video is helpful, a like is very much appreciated. Before I start, I'm going to be covering Red Dead tomorrow of course, or later today. Really, I'm waiting for Red Dead Online to cover proper updates but I will be playing single player and so I'll be making some useful videos for you guys if you want them, so look out for that. Let's start with the new Halloween cosmetics. The new skins are here for you to buy, a mixture of BP and real money using Gcoin unfortunately. We'd like to see them all added for free given how much the Xbox has issues, but here are the prices. The Maniacal Butcher set, 10,000 BP. The Killer Clown set is 1,800 Gcoin. The Ancient Mummy set is 1,600 Gcoin. The Bloody Nurses set is 2,100 G-Coin, the Pumpkin Ripcord is 500 G-Coin, and the Sinister Skull Mask is 7,000 BP. You do get a free item, the Hunted Pumpkin Mask, and you receive that upon lobby login up until November 6th. These sets are also sold in individual pieces as well. I like the new skins a lot, though I think they're crazy if you think anyone's paying over $50 for three skin sets. I'm sure you guys will have a lot to say on that, but I do really like the way that they look. Let's move on to the PTS changes that have been added to the live servers. The training island has been added. The PUBG training mode lets 5 to 20 players solo queue with matchmaking, explore a brand new 2 by 2 kilometer map and practice all aspects of PUBG. From driving the game's various vehicles around the island's racetrack to practicing parachute landing on scarred targets to mastering the perfect peak shot. There's even areas to practice vaulting, close quarter combat and vehicle jumps. You can join through matchmaking by clicking on the training mode button in the lobby and here is how it all works. When there's more than five players in the matchmaking queue, the session will start immediately. Players will continue to join open sessions for up to five minutes after they start up to 20 per session. If there are less than five players in the matchmaking queue, matchmaking will continue for five minutes. If there are less than five players after five minutes, the session will start with the original number of players present and other players cannot join the session. Total playtime is 30 minutes. In the case where you immediately enter a session, you have five minutes where other players can still join, plus the regular playtime of 25 minutes on top of that. Players cannot drop below one health in training mode. I do like training mode, but I would actually prefer an option to play offline on your own instead of having to match make, but it's still a useful thing to have either way. Next, there's new weapons. Added the barrel M762, which is a new versatile assault rifle which spawns on Erangel, Miramar and Sanhok. The barrel 762 uses 762 ammunition of course, and can load up to 30 rounds, 40 with an extended magazine equipped. The barrel has upper and lower rails allowing for scopes and grips, and it has lower per bullet damage than the AKM, but a higher firing rate meaning higher DPS if you can control that kick. Another weapon has also been added, it's a new assault rifle called the MK47 Mutant. The Mutant can be acquired on all maps, Erangel, Miramar and Sanhok, through World Spawn. The Mutant is an assault rifle using also 7.62mm bullets and has a 20 round capacity, which can be upgraded to 30 rounds with the extended mag. The Mutant has two firing modes, single shot and two round burst, and all types of attachments can be used with the MK47, but it has no stock slot. Personally, I do really like both of these new weapons. What about new vehicles then? Added a new two-seat vehicle, the Scooter, which is exclusive to Sandhawk. Both the Scooter and the two-seater motorbike can be found on Sandhawk as well, so it doesn't replace one. Compared to the current motorbike, the Scooter has lower speed and an increased turning circle, but the same health. Another vehicle was also added to Sandhawk as well, the Tuck Shy. It's a three-person vehicle that substitutes the UAZ, Dacia and Minibus. The Tuck Shy is slower compared to the previous vehicles, but fits perfectly with Sandhawk's environment. Also added was the third person perspective aim camera position to the options menu. You can reset to right shoulder and the camera will always be positioned above the character's right shoulder. Reset to left shoulder so the camera is positioned above the character's left shoulder. Latest peak shoulder which the camera positions automatically to the direction you last leaned. And the latest aim shoulder the camera remains to the last ads position. In this setting the camera position won't be changed by leaning while not in ads or scoping. So you have a lot more control over where you can peek now using these different options. Added a new attachment, the laser sight. Bullet spread is reduced when hip firing and soft aiming. The laser sight fits on weapons with a lower rail slot available, taking up the grip slot. And essentially it's not quite as good as grips, so it's actually better to use a grip and to use the laser sight for pistols only. 
but I guess it's better than nothing if you don't have a grip for your weapon. Added the improved marker ping system, first introduced for testing on the test server update. Using the R button you can create a marker where you are aiming on the compass at the top of the screen and all team members can see the marker on the compass. After setting the marker there are two second cooldown before you can mark again and the marker of the compass will automatically disappear after five seconds. Whenever the ping markers overlap, because of course everyone can set one, the closest location marker will be shown on top so you can know which one is closer. So guys, those are all of the new additions to the game, but what about actual in-game changes? Well, there's been a restriction to the BP system. Previously, they offered BP rewards based only on your ranking. Now they've restructured the system to consider both playtime and ranking. Rewards have been restructured to equalize the difference in BP efficiency based on playing time for each map and mode. So basically, if you want more BP, then just try surviving longer. They've also made changes to team rewards, and you'll no longer be able to receive four times the BP because you were playing alone in a squad game. What about changes to gameplay then? The blue zone effect has been changed to look different. Increased maximum sensitivity from 10 to 20. A change I know a lot of you guys have been looking forward to because your movement is just too slow. Added a key guide to the loading screen tips. Improved the design of the map markers. They now have a circle cut out of them so you can see the number 1, 2, 3, 4 inside of them a lot easier. What about reporting players? You can now report a player for teaming, gameplay interference, verbal abuse, and this can be done after the match is over. Finally guys, we have performance changes. Optimized weather effects to increase frame rate, especially during rain. Optimized cloud effects during free falling to increase frame rates. Improved performance by adjusting on hit effects for various materials. Improved server and client performance by optimizing the inner composition of the plane and increase the quality of optimization to reduce desync. And just to be clear, this won't get rid of desync, it just reduces it. There's still a big issue with desync in the game and they're still investigating, unfortunately. So it's still an ongoing problem. But guys, that just leaves us with bug fixes. It's been a long video already, so I'm not gonna bore you by reading out all 34 bug fixes, but they do make loads of small changes to all aspects of the game. What I can tell you before I finish is one change for the next update. And that is that they're working on field of view changes. Not field of view slider, just a field of view change for first person. And this is changes that the PC version received a long time ago, and it will make quite a noticeable improvement to the way your game looks. So hopefully that goes smoothly and we can see the changes in the next update. You can see some of the comparisons on the screen right now. But guys, that's pretty much it for this one. The patch notes for all the PTS stuff added to the live servers. I'll be back tomorrow with more PUBG videos, but also I'll start my coverage of Red Dead as well. I'm waiting for more Red Dead Online stuff so I can cover updates like I do PUBG. I'm still going to be making guides on single player stuff since I'll be playing it anyway, even if you guys don't particularly watch them. Stay tuned for more PUBG news. Until then though, thanks for watching, have an awesome day, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.